welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I hope you guys like this lighting situation in here. I'm changing it up. My video from like two weeks ago really inspired me uh, to make my videos a little bit more visually appealing for you all. So I, this might not be the final stage, but we're, we're working with something. Today we are going to be returning to the topic of sensualism. Another episode for this philosophical subject is long overdue. I have compiled in this video a small list of habits that I believe reflect the sensualist's sentiment. These habits are naturally ritualistic, but more importantly, they are characterized by how they approach time. I've talked about time on this channel a lot, the expansion and contraction of time, our fixation with time. Sensualism is about living slowly because when you do, when you take your time, the body has time to analyze its surroundings via, you would have guessed it, the senses. It is every sensualist's job to sharpen their senses in order to appreciate beauty in all of its forms fully. Now, for those of you who don't know what sensualism is for those of you who are new here or have not watched these videos of mine. It is a lifestyle philosophy that I have been working on. Sensualism draws inspiration from the Victorian aesthetes, from bohemians, from ascetics and hedonists alike. But more crucial than its roots, sensualism is a product of my desire to experience beauty at every waking second. These videos are just kind of like a field guide for how to achieve that. Now, if you want a little bit more of an in-depth discussion on sensualism, how I got to this point, um, there will be a playlist for you above. Now back to time. Time to me feels like battling just this great beast. Today, everyone is on a time frame. Everyone is in the fast lane. Attention spans are shortening can't enjoy one thing because you're thinking about the next thing. Everyone's running late, sleeping too much, not taking care of themselves, not paying attention. And I gotta ask myself this, as much as the next person, what's the rush? I have always noticed that people that take their time are way happier and enjoy life more. I can't tell you how sad it is to see somebody fully involved in something and then somebody jolts them out of it and says, hurry up. I often, I think that's kind of offensive sometimes. That's an internal thing, I don't express it, especially like if it's at a job or something like that. But some things really just take time. Some things can't be rushed. They require focus and attention and diligence. And when it comes to living and beauty, there is no such thing as hastening. My greatest inspiration, one of my greatest inspirations for sensualism or this video specifically, would be craftsmen and artists. People who are dedicated to the process, not taking shortcuts to get the final result. I mean, if a Japanese lacquer bowl needs to take 10 years to complete, it takes 10 years. If a hand-molded porcelain vase takes all night to smooth every perfect edge, it takes all night. If a piece of artwork isn't ready, and needs more time for the subject to become clearer, then it isn't ready. You don't force a flower to bloom. It's just unnatural. And I want to take that same disregard for time that the craftsman or the artist has and apply that to everyday life, just like the beauty they actively pursue in their work. Life can be a work of art. Even the most mundane tasks can be if you live with intent. And recognize that so many things that we do have a methodology that signifies a purpose. And the purpose is to bring us sublime pleasure. If you only stop to consider that, so many parts of your day could just be like performance art pieces. And the habits that I've written here are some of those performances, I suppose, or proposals for them. I have five habits here, um, but there's surely hundreds more. I'll probably do another video just like this. The five habits that I have here, though, encourage you to disregard time, to take deep pleasure in routines, make return, turn the word in, in the first place, take the word routine and turn it into ritual, okay? That's, that's the first thing you gotta do. Just routine just sounds horrible in the first place. But the last thing is that these habits make you notice things that are easily overlooked. 
all of them are just methods that I have employed in my own life or attempt to because it's hard. Of course, you know, everything's a challenge. You have to be disciplined. But I try to employ these in my own life so that they awaken my senses and so I can get the most joy and happiness out of my day. So here are the five habits that I encourage just about anybody to employ in their life. Number one, take at least one hour to get ready in the morning. It doesn't matter if you don't wear makeup. It doesn't matter if you dress simply, if you don't do your hair, if you don't take a shower. I don't care what you do in that hour. Even if it's just laying down and looking at the ceiling, take an hour to get ready before you meet another soul out there. But if you are somebody that does take care of their hair or they do their makeup or whatever it is that you do in the morning that is, you know, part of the, you know, maintenance, take your time with it. All of these things, I'm just probably gonna end up saying this a million times, take your time. If you're doing your eyebrows, your makeup, especially if you're doing your hair, if you're putting, uh, if you're doing skincare, if you're putting on perfume, choosing your clothes, your outfit for the day, put on some music, put on your favorite TV show. Um, I don't know, have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee while you're doing it. Enjoy yourself, light some incense, make it into a ritual. That is, that is that crucial time where you prepare yourself for the world. And that should be a really sacred time for you. There is nothing worse than having your buzzer go off and then getting up and leaving the house, being ready in like 15 minutes. That's rushing, that's insane. I say that because I've done it so many times. It's like I'm not even a person until I've arrived at my destination. Like it's been like 30 minutes and I finally feel human. Like you need time to collect yourself and to like find yourself before you go out into the world. When you get ready in the morning, especially if you're a girl or I mean, even a dude, like just manicuring and like grooming and that kind of thing has a lot to do with self-respect. Uh, there are studies that even say that it helps to just have a more positive outlook on life and the day itself helps you take on the day. So morning routine, getting ready, an hour. An hour sounds like a long time. It's really not. It's not. So I know people who've taken hours to get ready, but it's just, just take some time for yourself, really. Number two, is a particular favorite of mine. It's plating your food before you eat it. Now, if you're not familiar with what plating means um, in the restaurant industry, it means it's the very aesthetically pleasing way of arranging food on a plate. Now, sure, you're gonna eat all those things. A lot of people would say just put it on your plate or just eat it out of the bag, stand in front of the refrigerator and eat it, whatever, but there is really something to be said. There is a reason why there are so many restaurants that charge an extraordinary amount of money for an experience when it comes to food and all of those experiences involve visual. One, obviously it takes time, you know, to arrange all of the food, but it's also, you get to appreciate the food before you consume it. It's not the food becomes more than just something that you need for nutrition and energy. It becomes something much more than that. It becomes an art form, but the appreciation for what you're consuming is much higher because you're not just scarfing it down your throat. Plating your food is a ritual that's to show respect for the food you're eating. I've done this myself and I can't tell you how happy it makes me. It makes me so excited. Like I'll eat the simplest meals ever. I'll eat rice all the time, but I don't just eat rice. Sometimes I'll mold it, which I think is spectacular. I'll take like a glass and I'll put the rice in and I'll pack it in and then I'll just take it off and have it molded onto my plate, you know, and I'll eat it like that. Um, plating and like, uh, like the plates and your tableware and like, I can't stress this enough. This is a video all on its own. Utilitarian objects, the things that you come, you know, that you touch on a daily basis. The food that you eat should look beautiful. And I think that whatever you're eating it on should be beautiful too. That should be taken into consideration. Um, it also helps you to eat slower too. It helps you to eat more, I'd say, responsible portions where you're not like overstuffing yourself. 
so that's just like another perk too you know you can really taste the food and then you uh you know when you're full but yeah plating plating's a big one plating's just a favorite too it's just like that extra mile number three is to be early wherever you're going or be late <laughs> the incentive with this is just to not rush don't rush to get anywhere take your time again i'm saying it again enjoy the walk that it takes to get somewhere enjoy the drive that it takes to get somewhere i've been both people i have implemented um like in college for example where i would take an extra hour in the morning to be early to my classes and i was so much happier i went and i got like a cup of coffee and i read a book before my classes and i just like was super zenned out and just got to my classes and i was just in a much better mood than staying up all night not getting my assignments in on time and waking up at the absolute last minute and then running to class because I was late. Whichever one you are, and there have also been times, countless times where I've been late to class, where I've been late to work, and I just had to learn to not let that bother me so much <laughs> if it did happen. It's really just an act of letting go of all that. But whichever one it is, you either don't mind, you don't care, or you plan ahead, especially if you have like a commute or something like that, definitely enjoy it. Definitely enjoy the time that it takes to get there. Listen to a podcast, listen to good music. Um, I don't know, enjoy the act of actually driving, like the actually enjoy the, the act of driving, especially like if you have a nice car. Like I think about that all the time whenever I'm older and I'll have enough money, I, I definitely want to get like a, a vintage car just so I can enjoy driving more. Yeah, don't rush to get anywhere for any reason. This is kind of in the same vein. Number four is to bask in the moment, to consider transition between certain parts of your day. I think that it's really important to kind of like let your soul catch up with things. It's really quite terrible when you go to one store and then you go to another place and then you know maybe you go and get a bite to eat and then you drive home and then you're packing something up and you're ready to go somewhere else like i have so many times where i literally just sit in my car for like five minutes for absolutely no other reason other than just to catch up mentally and it's one thing for people to be lacking the transition state in between let's say errands but i think i i dislike it the most whenever people do this with activities that they enjoy like people who can't linger after a good meal i don't trust people like that you need to like talk stay enjoy the atmosphere where do you gotta go you're going home don't grab the check you know have another glass of wine digest your food people who finish their food and they're immediately out of the restaurant i have so many questions for that always bothers me or people who let's say like leave a concert immediately after i stay around you know i'm not trying to get my uber immediately like i want to like see people leave and i want to see like how drastic the scenery looks after the lights have been turned on or i don't want to hear everybody's conversations about where they're going next after all that transitions in between things should be they should if a couple of minutes you know sometimes maybe it's just an hour like just to just to settle down too if you're going from one thing to the next if you have a couple of things planned in your day you're in like a headspace right in one thing that you're doing and then you need that to just residually go away and then you get into this new headspace you can't it's i don't think it's healthy to to go from one experience especially if they're so different and you kind of maintain and you keep that like ghost of the past thing that you were just at or what you whatever you were doing you need to be washed clean if that makes any sense for the new experience for whatever it is you have next you need to be ready you need to be sorted sorry if that one sounded a little bit like a mess but i hope i hope it made sense the fifth one and the last one is to forget your all-in-one miracle phone i am in fact an advocate for the nokia phone movement i think we spend way too much time on our iphones uh, it's basically a small computer that you just keep with you all the time the things that we have on our phone 
you used to be separated, right? You used to have a camera. You used to have an MP3 player. You used to have your laptop. Uh, people don't even need laptops anymore. You used to have a calculator. You used to have pen and paper instead of notes, like things like that. I just think that instead of like using your phone for everything, I think that it's really, really beautiful to consider the process for so many things that our iPhone does for us. Like instead of an email, what about the physical act of writing a letter to somebody? Instead of taking a bunch of photos, just endless unnecessary photos on your iPhone, why not get and learn how to use a film camera, develop the film yourself and watch, you know, watch your memories come up from the darkness. Why not, why not learn how to do that? Why not instead of going on Spotify, why not just get a vinyl and, and listen? This is very popular, but why not just set everything up, lay yourself down on the couch, put on like a nice luxurious little robe and just listen to a vinyl. All of the small movements, all of the steps that it takes to accomplish just those things are so, so wonderful. And they are completely and totally erased by our phones because it's all just compiled and made into, I guess, more efficient device. But it's really like, it's taking the, the love out of so many things. I know this one is definitely hard and I've been looking into ways to try and get rid of the phone, the iPhone altogether. I've even asked people who have attempted it and get a flip phone and it's quite literally impossible because the carriers do not support um, reception for those kinds of phones. So it's very obvious that they're trying to make them obsolete altogether. But I do think that these, these couple of things that I mentioned with the phone separating yourself from it and lessening your dependency on that phone, I guess, is, is still possible. I think it's still feasible. It's, it's a little act of rebellion, I suppose. But yeah, that was the last one. Those are five habits that I think will help you to slow down a little bit and enjoy the beauty that is always coming your way. And a lot of these, a lot of the methodology in itself is beautiful, is enjoyable because it is beautiful. This is just another, some more practices of the sensualists over here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to comment what you think below. Please let me know what your methods are what your habits are. Please do not forget to like and subscribe as always, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.